Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Uh, last lecture was about um, magnetic field around a straight line electric current. And I would like to just solve a couple of problems related to uh, this particular situation. Um, now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics 14, presented on unizor.com. Uh, if you watch this lecture from the website, you will have um, an advantage of basically having the whole course in certain logical sequence. In addition, the same website contains Math for Teens course, which I consider to be a prerequisite. You have to know math um, to study physics. Um, now every lecture has a very detailed written explanation, notes, which is basically like a textbook. And uh, for some people who like to be challenged, there are exams on this website. And the website is completely free. There are no advertising. You don't even have to log in if you don't want to. OK, so uh, two problems. Well, first of all, let me just very, very briefly repeat what we were talking about last um, lecture. So if you have a straight line, with electric current and the line is relatively long I mean really from the physical perspective it's long from the mathematical perspective it's infinitely long and thin so it's a thin wire now there is a current I which is running along this um, uh, wire now I was talking about magnetic field which is caused by running electrons and the um, field lines, the force lines, are circular around their concentrical circles at any point. Also, altogether, the lines of the same radius are making a cylindrical surface with the wire being an axis of this cylinder. Now the bigger um, cylinders, which have bigger radius, um, also have the magnetic field line, and the bigger one and the bigger one. Basically, again, it goes to infinity, but getting weaker and weaker, because the field is spreading to a cylindrical surface of a bigger and bigger radius, and that's why per unit of um, area, the amount of energy is falling less and less, and it's uh, proportional to number of electrons which are going along the line. And it's inversely proportional to the um, uh, circumference of um, the circle at, uh, at the radius R. And there is a coefficient mu zero which is called space permittivity which basically connects the units of measurements. This is Tesla, this is amperes, this is meters. So that's how mu has certain um, value. Now, um, one more thing about direction of the forces. So, if magnetic lines are circular, it means that, let's say, if you will put a compass here, it will direct the north towards some direction which is tangential to, um, to the magnetic line, anywhere. Here it will be tangential, here it will be tangential. So, what is the direction? The direction is determined by the uh, rule of the right hand. So if you will put, this is a direction from plus to minus. So if you will put the right hand around this um, wire in such a way that your thumb points towards the direction from plus to, plus to minus, then your fingers will show you the direction of the um, magnetic lines. 
direction basically of the of the force because magnetic line represents basically the force um, and the force has a magnitude and direction obviously so direction is always uh, tangential to the line and the magnitude is this so in this particular case as you see force are, is always since it's a tangential to to this uh, circle and circle is in the plane which is perpendicular to um, the wire so all the magnetic forces are perpendicular to I so B as a vector is perpendicular to um, vector I as as a vector from plus to minus so that's my kind of preamble and uh, I also told you about this rule of the right hand um, by the way there is another kind of rule if you wish um, you know how the corks corkscrew is working right you are turning it this way and it goes this this way or if you turning this way it goes down right into the cork so this is the same thing if you consider this to be a cork screw it's going this way along this and it points towards the direction of the current so it's either the cork screw or the right hand rule um, helps you to determine the direction of the vector of um, intensity of magnetic field now the problems problems are really simple it's just whatever I just said that's the application of this my first problem is the following so you have a Cartesian coordinate system Okay. Now you have two wires, not one, two, two wires. One wire goes parallel to the y axis, parallel to the y axis at the distance a, well actually it's minus a. So it's zero at x uh, minus a um, no zero at y and minus a at z so this is coordinate this of this point zero at x zero at y and minus a and you have the wire which is parallel to the y-axis now here on the opposite point also a you have the wire which is parallel to the x-axis so the coordinate of this point is 0 0 a so these are two points on z axis through which one wire goes parallel to the wire and another parallel to the x to the x-axis now the direction is towards the positive of the y and this is towards the positive to the x now let's consider you have the same current i so this is plus minus and this is plus minus my question is what is the vector of um, intensity of magnetic field at the origin of coordinate um, now you understand that this is actually a sum of two vectors you know when you you have two fields you basically have superposition of forces there is one force which is caused by this magnetic field force and another force which is produced by this wire so these forces are two vectors and they must be added together 
That's the rule of superposition. If you have two forces acting at the same point, the resulting force is just a vector sum. So you have to know how to sum the vectors, right? And if you don't know, you have to always go to the Mass for Teens course, which is presented on the same website. Okay, so first we will have to establish what is the vector produced uh, magnetic force intensity vector produced by one wire and then another wire. Okay, so um, we know the I and we know the distance from the wire to the point which we are interested in. So how the uh, magnetic field around this wire will actually be. I mean, how exactly it will behave, this magnetic field. Well, again, magnetic field lines, that's the very important thing. You always have to think about magnetic field lines. Magnetic field lines are lying in a plane perpendicular to the wire. So you have a plane perpendicular to the wire and it's a circle with the center at the wire. Now, what is the plane which is perpendicular to this wire? Well, this wire is parallel to X. So the plane which is perpendicular to this line should be parallel to YZ, right? And we also need uh, such a circular line which is perpendicular to this and goes through this point, right? We are interested in magnetic field in this particular point. So let's just think about, again, it's supposed to be in the plane which is parallel to YZ plane and it's supposed to go through this uh, it's supposed to be a circle with this line with this line uh, point as a center so it would be something like this this is a circle which is in the plane YZ now since y YZ is um, perpendicular to the X and my wire is parallel to the X so my wire will be perpendicular to this circle so you can put this as a dotted line right it's behind this circle right so this part is in front and this dotted line is behind this circle now um, now let's talk about the, the, the force. Well, the force at this particular point should be tangential to this circle and the circle is basically lying in the YZ so it's the plane of my board so everything, this is a real circle um, and uh, it's supposed to be tangential and also supposed to be um, corresponding to right hand rule, right? So I have to put my hand around um, around so the, my my um, current goes this way and it goes this way I think right that's how it goes which means my vector of force is here this is my B1 it goes along the y-axis and its magnitude is two uh, no, sorry mu zero i divided by two pi and the distance is a right so this is my magnitude and this is my direction along the y axis okay now let's talk about this wire now this wire is parallel to Y, which means 
the plane which is perpendicular to this should be perpendicular to y and it's basically xz plane, right? This plane, xz plane, is perpendicular to y. So, uh, I have to find a plane which is perpendicular to the wire and goes through this point. So what is this plane? Well, that's actually the y, xy plane itself. And I have to find a point which um, I have to find a circle actually which goes through this point and uh, its center is this one so it's something like this and if you will just think about the direction direction is again uh, it's this way so it looks like it's this way So the vector goes this way, along the x-axis, and this is my b2. This is a direction, but since my um, current is exactly the same and distance is exactly the same, my value of magnitude will be exactly the same. So, again, my first um, magnetic field circle which basically corresponds to the magnetic field line is in the yz plane my second circle is which represents the magnetic uh, field line which goes through this point it's in xz plane the bottom part of it actually negative part um, negative towards z and uh, so I have basically these two. As you see, these are two vectors. They have the same magnitude, and they are going one along x, another along y axis. So they are perpendicular to each other. So what will be their result of their vector sum? Well, the vector sum will be along the well it will be at 45 degrees right from both because this is 90 degrees these are perpendicular to each other right and the magnitude would be what uh, le let's just uh, look from the top from the top it will be basically x y this will be b1 this will be b2 and what's the hypotenuse well, the hypotenuse is square root of this plus square root of this and uh, they have the same value so it would be mu zero i over two pi i square times two because you have to add them together and square root from it. So it's mu i two pi a and then you have to multiply it by square root of 2. And that's the magnitude of this vector. So this is the answer. The vector will be within x, y, z, starting from the origin, going along the main diagonal at 45 degrees, and the magnitude is this one. So this is my first problem. And the second problem will be very, very much like this one, just slightly different numbers, whatever. I'm basically trying to <coughs> to do these simple things so you will feel this the um, the right of the right uh, right hand rule or, or, or corkscrew uh, rule and uh, imagine the whole thing in, in three-dimensional space so you need a little bit imagination how it all looks it's always good to have a little geometry in this speaking about geometry it just emphasizes one more thing one more time that mass is very very important for physics you really have to know your mass calculus is a must for physics and uh, 
like in this and many other problems, especially in mechanics, you need vector algebra. You need to know how to um, add, subtract, and multiply vectors by scalar or vector by vector, etc. So my second problem is, again, you have the Cartesian system of coordinates, but we have different organization of wires. Now they're parallel each other. One goes parallel to Z, both wires. One crosses the x-axis at A. So the coordinate of this point is A, 0, 0. X coordinate is A, is A and Y and Z coordinate of this point are 0. Another is this B from the uh, origin, so the coordinate of this point is 0, X, B, and 0 uh, on, on Z. Now the direction is plus minus, so direction is here, plus minus, direction is here. And I'm again interested in, um, yeah, this is I1 and this is I2. Now we have different um, currents running. And again, it's ideal situation, which means that the wires are infinite infinitely infinitesimally thin and infinitely long uh, so there is a current so we need to calculate the um, magnetic field force at this particular um, line at, uh, at point at, at origin mag magnetic field intensity force okay so again we are first of all we have to think about magnetic lines <coughs> So, let's talk about this. Now, it's vertical, it goes parallel to Z, which means that my magnetic lines are supposed to be perpendicular. So, if it's parallel to Z, my magnetic lines um, are in the plane which is perpendicular to Z, which is XY plane. So, it's in this particular plane, and obviously in all parallel planes. I mean, they are all around. So, which plane um, which is perpendicular to this wire goes through this point. Well, that's actually XY plane, right? So, when we're talking about a, a circle um, which is crossing this point and at the same time it's in the plane perpendicular to this, uh, it's supposed to be center at this and the circle would be something like this. Okay, that's XY plane, and it's perpendicular, and since my direction is down, so it's here. This is the direction of the magnetic um, uh, lines, magnetic uh, intensity, but magnetic force, right? <coughs> Which means that at this point, what is tangential to this circle? Well, tangential to the circle, which has a center here, and the radius is exactly this, but this line is exactly perpendicular to the radius, so it would be here. So this is my B1 vector. Okay, now let's talk about this. Again, this is parallel to Z, which means perpendicular should be parallel to XY, and it should go through this point, and it's supposed to have a center, obviously, here. So that would be something like this. This circle. And my direction is right hand. It's supposed to be this way. And at this particular point, perpendicular to this circle, uh, which uh, which is completely in x y z, in x y uh, sorry x y plane, should be perpendicular. And this is this one. So this is my b two. So if you will look from the top, 
where you will see only x, y. You will see one circle on x, that's a, goes this way, and direction is this, so this is my b1. And another is y, that is the center, this is my circle, and the tangential would be here, this is my b2. So these are two perpendicular vectors. Obviously, their magnitude is b1 is equal to mu i1 divided by 2 pi. Distance is a, and b2 is mu 0 i2 divided by 2 p b, because the b is distance. Okay, So this is b, this is a, and these are, um, this is goes this way. So these are two vectors. And again, this is the plain Pythagorean theorem, when you have to really find out what exactly is there, the magnitude of their um, resultant vector. It's just square root of two square, of sum of two squares, right? And the direction is obviously depending on A and B. So if you have a, a, a rectangle of A and B, then this is what? This is arc tangent of B divided by A, right? B divided by A is tangent. So the angle itself is arc tangent of this. So we know that this is our So this is an angle, so we know the angle, and the magnitude is square root of b1 square plus b2 square. What will be that? Well, obviously, mu 0 divided by 2 pi would be outside, and the square root would be of a1 divided by a square plus a2 divided by b square. So this is the magnitude, this is the angle. So what have we learned today? Well, number one, <coughs> that the intensity of the magnetic field is always perpendicular to the wire itself. So the vector of intensity is always all vectors of intensity on the same magnetic line are in the same plane and magnetic line itself is a circle in the plane which is perpendicular to uh, the wire to the to the direction of the current actually right so that's what's very important important is the right hand rule or a corkscrew rule so whenever you are turning uh, your hand around the wire pointing towards the direction of the current, your fingers show the direction of the intensity um, along the magnetic line, which is, uh, which is a circle. And basically everything else, again, I just applied the formula which we have derived in the previous lecture. And again, what's important is that whenever you have two sources of uh, magnetism, then the vector of intensity is always a sum of vectors of intensity of components. Um, this is just a plain kind of a vector algebra of things. And in this case, I was trying to do it in such a way that the vectors are perpendicular to each other, so you don't really have to go to these parallelograms. That's just a plain Pythagorean theorem. Okay, that's it. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on uh, unisor.com. You have to go to, obviously, Physics 14's course, then you choose electromagnetism subject, and in that subject you have to find the magnetism and uh, the um, 
current, electric current, where this particular problems, it's problems one, you will find. So there are some nice pictures, much nicer than I did here, obviously. Um, and, uh, and the textbook style explanation, I think it's very helpful. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.